Pulling the plug on electric cars. $4 a gallon gas may have you wondering what happened to them. CNN Miles O'Brien went looking for some answers. Listen to that sound. Can you hear it? You can't, right? It's an electric vehicle. This is a 20-year-old Duran. It's a prototype. Now, if you're interested in beating the pump and beating those $4 a gallon gas prices, it's hard to beat an electric car. The problem with electric cars is there isn't a single practical, reasonably priced new electric vehicle on the U.S. market right now. Oh, I did start it. I forget sometimes. Started <laughs> or not started. <laughs> Once you get Mark Geller started on the subject of electric cars, there's no stopping him. So it really doesn't inconvenience you. There's definitely no inconvenience, and there's a tremendous amount of uh, pleasure in passing gas stations and watching the price rise. Mark's been breezing by gas pumps in San Francisco for seven years. This is his second all-electric car, a used plug-in Toyota RAV4. Used because right now there isn't a new practical electric car on the U.S. market. Is it frustrating? It's incredibly frustrating. It's frustrating because every day I meet people who would like to be driving this car. Ten years ago, Detroit seemed positively plugged in. The electric car is here. General Motors built and leased about a thousand of the fabled EV1s after a California law mandated sales of zero emission vehicles. I think it's the future. I'm I'm happy. But by 2003, California backed down. GM repoed the EV1s and destroyed them amid protests. Mark was among the protesters. So why does he think Detroit pulled the plug? I would say because they are fearful of how disruptive plug-in cars will be and how unattractive their old product line will appear. Mark says a fully charged battery takes him 120 miles. Normally, a charge overnight at home is more than enough to get him through the day. And here's the kicker. Mark works for a solar power company. His own roof is covered with solar cells. As soon as I got the car, I realized now I understand why this makes sense. I can create my own electricity. Would you call yourself an electric car zealot? A so zealot go... might be a little strong, <laughs> but I, I truly believe that this is a, 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 an option consumers ought to be able to, to purchase. Back now with another one of those Toyota RAV4 electric vehicles. Take a look under the hood just for a moment. I always like to see what this looks like. Real simple. That's all for like air conditioning and stuff. This is just the control unit. There's big batteries that go back through the drivetrain. If you wanted to get one of these, you'd have to go onto eBay. And these days, you'd probably have to spend 60000 bucks for one. Steve Taylor is the owner of all these cars here. He bought this for about 40000 a few years ago on eBay. I guess that settles the demand question for electric cars. People want these cars, right? Yes, they certainly do. I've had lots of people come to me and want to even buy one of my cars that I own here. Detroit blinked 10 years ago and, and pulled the plug, literally, on electric cars. Actually, not quite 10 years ago, but 10 years ago, they're way ahead. <laughs> and they crushed everything. They, they got rid of all the advances they made. Um, you have to wonder if they'd kept going with the electric cars where we'd be now. Have you thought about it that much? Yeah, I would think that we'd have an electric car that would go 300 miles, be comfortable, have all the amenities that we're used to, lightweight, uh, fast. That uh, would be great. Uh, in other words, all the versatility of internal combustion. Let's yes. go down and look. This is the only one in his collection here. You can't get these anymore. These are retrofit metros. This is the only vehicle here you can buy new now. And it's really not. I mean, it's obviously a single-person commuter car. It's expensive, $35,000. Yes. It's, it's called the Sparrow or the NMG for no more gas. No more gas. Um, who's this for, and does it, does it really answer a need? Well, it's a single-person commuter car. Uh, they'll go about 60 miles now with the lithium batteries. Uh, uh, most of the people in America drive by themselves to work, and that's what it was designed for. And most people drive about 30 miles per day. So when they think about electric cars, they think, oh, that's not enough range, but probably it is, yes, right? Yes, it is, yes. It's not the car you're going to take to see the Grand Canyon from Atlanta, <laughs> no, right? definitely not. But as a second car, a commuter car, this might be an option. Perfect. As for you, what, what do you say to people who say, well, hey, the, the electricity that, that uh, um, is generated to juice this up is comes from coal. It's no cleaner. Well, actually, it is cleaner. Uh, the, the power companies are constantly being uh, made to make the power cleaner and cleaner, and 
and a coal power plant charging an electric car is probably just as clean as a Toyota Prius. So we're, we're ahead of the game on that. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to take it for a quick test drive. This thing will do what now in speed? 70 miles an hour. If you dare. Huh? Have you ever taken it to 70? Yes, I have. <laughs> and it was scary. I bet it was. You wearing a helmet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm off in the Sparrow, and I don't know if I'm going to take it 70. Silicon Valley millionaire Shai Agassi has a huge, huge idea. When you find a great purpose in life, you got to pursue it. He calls his idea Better Place. And investors love it. They've already poured in over $300 million. I think it's one of those seminal companies that is going to change the way the world functions. Governments are getting behind it, too. We believe this is the future. Okay, so what is this big idea? Solve the climate crisis, create jobs, and eliminate our dependence on foreign oil. All in three easy steps. Step one, convince the world's car companies to manufacture electric cars that have removable batteries. You'll, you'll plug in a cable and that's it. Because I'm, I'm used to, when I'm finished filling up, I, I like to shake the hose a little bit. Well, well you can squeeze the electrons. <laughs> Step two, convince governments to install millions of charging outlets. And they will be at home, they'll be at work, they'll be at downtown and retail centers. And by the time you came back to your car, it's topped off. And step three, when people want to make a longer drive and there's no time to recharge the battery, just build a nationwide network of battery swapping stations. There are lanes inside gas stations, and you go into the switch station, your depleted battery comes out, a full battery comes in and you keep driving. It takes you about two, three minutes. See? Easy. All Shai Agassi has to do is oversee one of the world's largest global infrastructure projects, replace two billion gas cars with electric ones, and then convince you to buy them. And has nobody said, by the way, this is crazy? Oh, uh, about nine out of ten people say it's crazy, but the other ones are actually saying, where can I put my money? That would include Alan Salzman, CEO of Vantage Point Venture Partners. We have this simple investment thesis, and it served us well for the last 25 years. And that is, bet on the inevitable. I'll grant it's of large scale, but none of this requires what we think of as new laws of physics. This is all doable. In fact, Nissan and Renault have already manufactured prototypes of the first Better Place cars. Other car companies are on the way. Now, to pull this off, Better Place is going to need more than money and more than technology. It's also going to need the people in the halls of political power to sign on. And Governor Lingle of, uh, of Hawaii uh, was, was really the driving force behind getting us to Hawaii. We are talking about 25 countries around the world and, and various different governors and, and uh, mayors in, uh, in the U.S. Including San Francisco Mayor Gavin Newsom. Three big city mayors, Oakland, San Jose, and San Francisco, came together. What we want to do is create 250,000 stations or points of contact for electric charging. For a company only a year and a half old, Better Place has made amazing progress. But it's all for nothing unless people actually buy those cars. How much will one of these cars cost? If you take the battery component out of our car, which is what we do, we don't let you buy a battery, we buy the battery. An SUV will cost roughly the same as, a, as an equivalent SUV, roughly in the $20,000 range. A, a sedan will cost roughly the same range, about $20,000. But here's the twist. The car is cheaper the more you agree to drive it. We're just like a cell phone company. We sell miles. We pay for your financing of the car. Depending on how many miles you commit, sort of like how many minutes you commit, you can go all the way down and in the case of people who drive a lot, like taxis, all the way down to zero. Free car, if, if you sign up for the maximum minutes plan. It, it, this is Oprah for everybody, right? <laughs> it's a, you all got a free car. Now, not everybody is sold on Agassi's plan. There will be challenges, as Mayor Newsom is well aware. We're talking about 250,000 charging stations, nine Bay Area counties that can't get along on any other issue, and they're going to create a standardized outlet system and a ubiquitous service very difficult. So that's a legitimate critique, though we say, prove us wrong, don't assume us wrong. Today is a monumental milestone. It's the first time commercial cars actually go on the road driving 
at the toughest possible test that you can have. And you'll be able to say that you were there on April 26, 2010, when the first electric taxi actually took to the road in Japan. <laughs> The first EV taxis will be able to switch their batteries here. And by switching the batteries, they'll be able to extend the range. The battery switch process takes as little as 60 seconds. And that's much shorter than filling up a regular taxi. Here, uh, we are capable of handling as many as 12 batteries to ensure a constant supply of freshly charged batteries to the EVs. The batteries are charged in a temperature control environment and that ensures safety, reliability and efficiency of the batteries. Most car makers said it was impossible. Today not only is it possible, it's actually driving in the street picking up passengers. It's, it's important to prove our concept in Japan because Japan just doesn't believe in the conceptual thinking only. You have to show things actually around works. So it's very important to physically to demonstrate what we can do. Well, in Tokyo, taxis represent 2% of the total cars, but they are responsible for 20% of the total emissions. So by eliminating the taxi emission, we'll be eliminating a large chunk of tailpipe emissions. If you have a taxi driver going in Tokyo, every day we've done 30 demonstrations to 30 different people that electric cars are better. And I guarantee you they're going to ask the driver, does this thing really work? And when they say not only does it work, it works better, it's quieter, I actually like it better than my older taxi, you got the ultimate demonstration.